Um, plug is just stands for promoting love underground, and the whole point was to just promote music that's not well known, that I think is good, and um, uh, the reason why I did it was just because uh, nobody really wanted to sign me or release my music at the time. This is like you know, 15, 20 years ago, 20, yeah. And so I just created my own label, um, released my own stuff. I signed a few artists, but I realized like signing artists is a lot of work. It's you have somebody else's career in your hands, and I don't like that feeling. You know? Um, I'm already busy, like, juggling my own career, you know? Um, but I'll release, like, small projects for other artists if I'm involved, you know? Um, yeah, and so, yeah, the label is, is pretty much just uh, a way to release my music. Uh, well, mostly it's me, but I released, um, in the past, I released a group called The Tones. I released a producer, very talented, named Green Tea. Um, we did like a single with uh, Aloe Black. Um, who else? Uh, we did a couple like DJ Edit Records. Um, and uh, more recently dropped the EP Kiro Najure. Um, yeah, so... It, I mean, I, I have released a lot of songs and vinyl and albums from the label. But yeah, it's mostly my stuff. Formo, I like. I, I met him in LA, and I knew him for years, just because you know we have mutual friends. And then one day, um, he just showed me his music. I didn't even know he ma he made music, so I was like, oh wow, it's actually pretty good. So then, you know, he kept asking me for a beat, and then uh, finally, <clears throat> finally I gave him one, and we just recently released it called Imagine. Uh, but actually, we made that song like four years ago. So it's a little bit older, but actually, when I listen to it still, it sounds, you know, it still sounds like good to me, you know? So that's why we released it. And then, like, yeah, Trout and Julia was introduced to me uh, by my friend Terrence, uh, who, uh, he works at KK Farm right now. But he introduced me to them, and then, um, yeah, I really liked what they're doing. And, um, it kind of happened very organically. <clears throat> we just sent the song back to them and they sent the vocals back and forth. And then uh, we, yeah, we came up with the song, the Jazz Hop remix. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cool to see like, you know, what's happened since then, you know? Yeah, they're, they're very uh, important, I think, for Taiwanese music. No, there's no culture shock. I think the biggest thing is the language barrier, but, you know, that's not usually a big problem, you know. Um, I like to embrace artists from any country, you know, no matter what language, you know. Like I said, good music and bad music, that's it, you know, so um, if, if I think it's good, then I want to work with you, you know, so. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's um, it's cool that more people are embracing music that they don't understand, you know, like, Japan always listened to Western hip-hop, even though they don't understand the words, but America never would do that, you know, it's rare, but now everybody does that, you know, a lot of uh, American, you know, Korean hip-hop, R&B fans, K-pop, you know, and, uh, and all kinds of music, you know, from all over the world. So, yeah. That is a good question. That is a good question. Uh, hmm. I mean, there, there's a lot of artists that I want to work with. Like, um, the list is like too long, I feel like, you know. Uh, but, you know, recently, like, uh, you know, I'm in Taiwan, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to collaborate with more Taiwanese artists, and, you know, um, we'll see what happens, you know? Like, I never really talk about it until it actually is finished, you know? So, but I hope something will happen, so stay tuned. Uh, oh, you want the secrets, huh? <laughs> uh, well, actually, I mean, 
I actually prefer going to uh, record fairs. I don't really prefer record stores that much. Um, but of course, you know, I love Groove Merchant in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, I go to the record fairs, like Beat Swap Me. Um, so definitely hit those if you go. Yeah, you know, I think um, if you go to uh, where Quarters is, that little plaza has, you know, um, good Korean barbecue, actually. All the food there is pretty good. You just have to wait a long time, but yeah, you'll be happy. Yeah, I mean, my advice is always the same, you know, like, um, I think, you know, sometimes, like, um, I think there's artists that um, they ask questions, like, um, oh, can you teach me how to produce, or, you know, um, they, people tell them, um, oh, you can't do this, um, and then they get discouraged, um, but to me, if you can overcome those, then that means you're probably on the right track, because if you figure out how to do it yourself, and if you can overcome people telling you that you can't do this or do that, then your passion is there. And that's the most important thing. I mean, yeah, like, you know, for me, like, I didn't, there was no YouTube uh, to learn how to make beats, you know? Like, these days, I think it's just, it's, um, if you really want to do it, um, and you don't do it, then you're the only problem. You know, <laughs> your problem is yourself because the, all the resources are there, everything is there. So, yeah. I think you can at least learn how to make music, you know, that way. And I think it's um, just important that you, uh, that you, you don't listen to like what other people are saying, you know. Unless they say your stuff is really whack. You know, if they say that, then just practice, you know. But yeah, that's it. Make sure the passion is there. Yo, it's Kira Wan. We lounging here with Westside Love in Taipei right now. And I uh, just want to shout out anyone that comes to the wall. Um, we're going to have a concert with Formo, uh, with uh, Julia Wu. And uh, we got the uh, Beats and Friends crew, Customs crew in the house. So it'll be fun. See you there.